G'day everybody, it's Mitch again, and what I wanted to do in this video is just uh, give you a bit of a background on myself and how I came to own my Model T. And who knows, maybe some of the information in this video might be of use to some of you. So, as I was saying, yes, my car is a 1925 Ford Model T uh, Open Tourer. It was built at uh, Henry Ford's Highland Park plant in Detroit, Michigan, in the USA. Uh, it never strayed far from the factory, it's uh, previous home of Ann Arbor, Michigan, just 60 kilometres away. So from new, it's had just three owners, myself being the third. So I've had a passion for vintage and veteran cars ever since I was a little tacker, and I've always had a dream that um, someday I might have one of my own. Uh, so it all started in 1994 at age 7 um, while living in Albany in West Australia where the former Extravaganza Motor Museum, uh, once home to uh, one of the most famous veteran cars in history, a uh, 1904 Darak called Genevieve, uh, famous for its appearance in the 1953 movie of the same name. Um, from that point I was hooked on old cars and as a boy I built countless models of them from Lego. Later in 2009 I was living in Burnie in Tasmania and even though the wonders of Wynyard Motor Museum was only a few kilometres away, ironically, I never went there. Now, the museum is home to the equal oldest Ford vehicle in the world and that's a 1903 Ford Model A. So I wanted to own a vintage car and I thought what better car to own than one of the most significant cars in history, the Ford Model T. Uh, it was the world's first car to be mass produced on an assembly line. Um, the Model T has the second highest production number of any car in history, with just over 15 million of them built in its 19 year production run between 1908 and 1927. It's only been surpassed by the Volkswagen Beetle with 21 million produced. And if you want to include, there is actually one other car that had a higher production number than that, um, but it was over several generations, and that was the Toyota Corolla, um, with around 40 million produced. My family and I moved to New South Wales in 2010, um, and in January of 2011, I decided uh, I wanted to buy a Model T. Uh, so I scoured the internet, hoping I might be able to buy one in Australia, but none were within my budget. The lowest priced one I could find at the time was around $45,000 Australian and that was never going to happen. So I resorted to looking in America and finally found the car that would ultimately become my own. So I imported the car with the help of my father. Uh, he imports all kinds of products from overseas uh, so I have to thank him for his assistance in importing my car. Um, it took eight months, almost $6,000 in freight charges and importation fees and much anticipation from when I expressed an interest in the car uh, to when it actually arrived on Australian soil. Now, almost every part of the car is original uh, with the exception of the seat upholstery of course uh, and the tyres. Um, even the uh, 20 horsepower engine is the original and it's still running as smoothly as ever. Um, with ongoing maintenance of course I've uh, put uh, some Champion X spark plugs in it um, which have improved performance. Um, the car underwent a partial restoration in 1966 or thereabouts and it was garaged ever since. Uh, I had the roof restored in Tari by a very skilled upholsterer, um, that's uh, Graham from Tari Upholsterers, and a local tyre fitter who, uh, to my surprise, had antique equipment in his workshop and was able to replace the perished inner tube on the spare wheel. Um, I've re also replaced the four coil boxes so now the engine runs uh, as it should. Now there's obviously no formal training available these days to teach anyone how to drive such a historic museum piece, uh, so I learned via videos on YouTube uh, uploaded by fellow Model T enthusiasts. Uh, the controls of the Model T are nothing like a modern car. Um, there are three pedals on the floor, uh, none of which is the accelerator. Uh, there's the clutch, the reverse pedal and the brake. Now, the handbrake lever not only operates the parking brake, but it doubles up as the gear lever, which is very amusing to modern mechanics when you try and explain it to them. Now, the Model T has just two forward gears, plus reverse, um, and has a top speed of about 70 km an hour, or 45 miles per hour. Um, the fastest I've been clocked at in mine is about 60 km an hour, um, but most of the time I only stick to around 40 or 50 km an hour, so quite slow. So by the time the car arrived um, in Australia, I felt confident I would be able to drive it. 
um, after I got the car started for the first time of course. Um, so my Model T performed almost perfectly although the fuel was running extremely rich at first which caused it to blow a lot of smoke. Um, with some assistance from a fellow Model T owner and a friend from Sydney I soon had the engine running to original spec. Uh, since the car arrived in Australia in August of 2011 um, I've had to do little maintenance to it. The Model T was heralded as one of the most reliable cars in history, although for safety reasons I've added a set of auxiliary brakes uh, known as Rocky Mountain brakes. Uh, the reason for this is the original brakes are not attached to the wheels directly as they are with a modern car. They're attached to the transmission and they have cotton linings. Now whilst I had every faith in the T's ability to stop, it wouldn't hurt to have an extra insurance policy. So there you have it, that's pretty much my, the story of my Model T and uh, how I came to get one. Um, yeah, let us know what you think in the comments and uh, don't forget to um, join the group on Facebook and also have a look at the uh, website at www.fordmodelt.net and um, yeah, I look forward to hearing from you. Well, that's all from me for now and I'll see you in the next video. Catch you later.